Yo, what's up everybody? So this is a popper update. Um, again, I forgot the number. I think this is like 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. This is why videos get real long. Hold on. I totally did forget. Okay, this is update number 18. Yes, because 17 was selling the popper. So update, update, update. Here's what I got. Okay. Um, I did get the, the, these uh, capacitors that I was trying to get so I can have a nice bank of capacitors. I'll show you those. I'm also working on a circuit to do pulse timing for the automated uh, sequence timing so that we can fat fire this thing over and over and over. I can just let it run for a couple of days and see what the results are at the end of that period. And yeah, so let's get started. Um, I, I Really quickly, before I forget, there's a gentleman out there I don't even remember your name. I've got too much going on and I just absolutely 100% apologize. He wants to know what the dimensions are of these buckets. So there's a good look. So I'm going to show you right here, right now. This is in inches. Point three, point six three zero wide the entire depth just over an inch 1.055 now I turned the back of these down to fit in the bucket or to fit in the chamber I really need to drill those chambers out and put bushings in there but we'll get to that another day uh, just under a half inch trimming those out and what are the dimensions I can give you the cut here 0.38 cut down there so that is the dimensions of these buckets I totally apologize you've been like emailing me every other day um, if anybody tried to get a hold of me email me a second time always a wise choice I read every email I get but sometimes I don't get to reply to them and they get down on the list and I've got thousands of emails so I apologize so there you go let's get started so here are the capacitors that I own at the moment there's going to be something happening here with some of these capacitors that I would like to share with you, so watch my upcoming videos. Mad scientist grin on my face right now. You'll like it. So, I happened to find these for a really, really reasonable price. And, uh, so I've got enough to make 30,000, or, yeah, 30,000 microfarads here. These are 330 microfarads apiece. 335 volt. Now, I think the ones Bob's using are uh, lower voltage, higher capacitance, and they're smaller. But he's got lower voltage, so that's why these are so big. I, I think that's why he's got just a small bank. And mine is huge. Um, I got these mounted on some uh, plexiglass. Actually, I think it's polycarbonate. Um, and these have the bolts on the bottom. So I went ahead and mounted them. I'll be building a little rack to house these things and have them all connected. I got some bus bars. I'll show you more of that on my other video. Um, so here's the current project test setup. Right here is a circuit that I made. I did design and build this. It's pretty simple. It's just some 555 timers, but I did something very tricky. Um, I did something with this last timer that I will show you on the oscilloscope. Now, my goal is to get rid of this, okay? I think that this transformer, the way I've got this wrapped on here, this is a giant inductor. I am wasting so much energy right here around this inductor whenever I fire this thing. Okay, so I'm, I'm losing a lot of energy right here. So what I wanted to do is get rid of that. So I've redesigned, rethought out, and refigured out how I'm going to build a different device using what I think is going to be almost identical or very very close to what you see on the regular PAP engine might be a little different than the PAP engine but it's going to be similar to what you see on uh, Bob's Bob Rohner's setup so I'm going to set this up and I'll show you how this circuit works matter of fact let's start with the high voltage and then I'll show you something with this because you're going to like this I've done something here that is very very interesting you'll like it It'll be useful for you guys on other projects. You'll want to watch it. 
So I'm going to connect this up real quick and then I'll be right back and I'm going to show you how I'm going to be connecting these coils to make them work together. Alright, so here's what I've got. In case you're wondering, this is the ignition coil that I purchased. They're supposed to be 45,000 volts. I'm going to be using them cross-referencing each other so one would be ground and one will be high voltage positive and basically one well I was talking to 10 man and he was like I don't know if he didn't understand what I was doing or he couldn't figure out what I was doing but I told him I could take two of these ignition coils and take both of these center outs here and make them arc to each other and he said no no they're both positive they won't do anything well he's right unless you hook one up backwards it's exactly what I've done it works just fine so now I have a, a low voltage here and a high voltage here that's all there is to it simple as can be now I do have a resistor this is a 1.5 ohm you're supposed to have a balance resistor on these things or else they pull too much current and they get pretty hot so this this works real well so uh, I should be ready to go I'm just gonna flip it on I've just got the high voltage wire hanging out here and uh, see what happens. I might have to tune this. I'm not sure. So there you go. Two ignition coils arcing into each other. Still have to play with the frequency. That should arc my gap. This is not the official pulsing box I'll be using. It's just what I have. So, from my understanding, this is really close to what Bob has. If it will focus. Yes, this is a high voltage one. So that should work pretty well. I love playing with high voltage. And it's not focusing because it's off the table. Oh well. You get the idea. Alright, so that is how I'm doing that. All right, that's how I got the circuit connected. Uh, a little more detail here if you want it. Basically, I've just got a MOSFET driver, a couple 555 timers. This is a Dave Lawton circuit, actually. This is like one of the very first things I ever built. It's pretty sweet. This LED's about burned out, I think. Um, and then I've got basically just a MOSFET driving the coil set. Comes out of the MOSFET, goes to the negative, then to the positive then to the positive, then to the negative, back out here to the positive, then the negative, back to the MOSFET. Well, this completes the other half of that circuit. So, simple as that. That is how you take two ignition coils and drive them together. I've been playing with a couple other things, but uh, I'll try this first. Um, I've also seen and tested taking a dimmer, a light dimmer, connecting it um, with a capacitor, and when I was figuring this out, I was trying to figure out what worked best, and actually right around 60 hertz ran perfect, so I guess it would be around that with that light dimmer. might be doubled. Anyway, it works pretty interestingly, but I don't think it's very tunable. That was my problem. I wanted to be able to tune it and see get my maximum output. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how this circuit works. I'll get it all set up here, and uh, I think you'll like this. So, here we go. I lied. I want to show you something real quick. I took off the uh, the balancing resistor because uh, I really think that's more designed for a car application. I think in short bursts this thing will be just fine like this and I just wanted to see what kind of arcing I could get so this is about the best I could get it tuned. So that should be, that should be just fine. Voltage never gets old. I'm only arcing 10 centimeters, so it's about like that. I 
I think that'll work, don't you? All right. Ice cold, although it's freezing out here. Continuing it on. Alrighty, so I've done something really cool with this circuit. Um, I'm going to show you what I did, but first I want to kind of explain to you what I have here. It's quite simple. Don't forget 1080p HD with these videos. You guys can see all the details. I'll try to hold this steady. So basically I have a 555, 555 excuse me, timer circuit right here. And basically what it's doing is it is timing the initial time loop. So basically, how many times do I want this thing to fire? Okay, that's my set frequency of firing time. Then I have a second timer right here. This circuit takes this signal and allows it to turn on and then off the certain duration. So if this is set it, let's just say one minute, and this is set it one second, every one minute this will fire for one second. This is only on for the length of time that it's set for. This one fires it. Okay? Then this circuit is actually putting out my frequency which is going to run my coils. I can adjust the pulse width and the frequency separately with a single 555 timer. That's the interesting part I want to show you guys. Uh, there's a lot of extra stuff on here. Uh, I just kept building, and uh, I don't actually have it hooked up to the coil yet. I've got a uh, TLP250 for a driver, and I'll be using it to drive a MOSFET. So let me explain. I've got two capacitors on each channel, if you will. So, do I have a small screwdriver? Can't quite reach my... Uh, this will work. See if I can get all this in here. Don't forget to watch this in HD. Alright, so here's basically what I've got. I've got a single timer here which controls the firing rate. You can see if I control this late longer, it only fires for every once in a while. If I flip a switch here, I'm going to have two channels basically. One's going to be setting it from. I've got all these calculations on my thing I did but I don't have them in front of me. I don't even going to give this I'm not even going to give this schematic out just yet. I've got a few tweaks to do to make it uh, finalized. But basically this timer will go somewhere between uh, half a second up to point or up to 75 seconds. And then if I flip a switch it'll go from like five seconds down to point one or something like that. I really I really can't remember. But I did a lot of playing around. I did calculate these out, and they weren't very close when I calculated them. I'm not sure what the reason is, but nonetheless, I got them all tweaked to where I like them, and I've got multiple adjustments. So this is this timer is running the frequency at which it fires. So basically, the popper will go, bah, fire, okay, and fire. All right. So this this actually sets when it fires. Then. I've got a manual override and an auto, which is what my big buttons on my box will be doing. So the next thing we got, let's go ahead and speed this back up. Let's go about there. So the next thing we got is this, I can turn this off, or can I? I guess I didn't hook that up to a switch. If I unplug this, nothing happens. If I push this button once and release it, nothing happens. I dropped this thing earlier, so wouldn't surprise me. Let me turn this off. There we go. I just had to turn it off instead of doing that. Alright, so this button I got right here is just a, a manual fire. So I push it once, and it only fires for the length I set it. So I can make it real short. I can make it even shorter. Little bitty, little bitty pulse. Alright, so basically, no matter how long I hold this button, as soon as I let it go, that's when it fires. It's an edge trigger. 
it fires for whatever duration I set it for. I've got this timer set so I can even set it for long, a long pulse if I want. All right. So whatever I set it for is what it fires for, the time that I set it for. And I've got it pretty long. Um, I probably won't even be using the other big capacitor here. I, like I said, I've got all these times written down. Let's flip it back. All right, so I'll have switches and stuff on this thing. So this fires for a duration of time. That's it. Now if I put it back to auto, it'll fire every time that the original signal tells it to fire. Okay, then the next part of the circuit is the, the part I really want to show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off... I'm just going to manually have this fire all the time. So uh, let's turn channel 1 off. And we'll adjust... So you can see what I'm doing. By the way, I love this oscilloscope. It works wonders for what I'm trying to do most of the time. I got my trigger set too low. There we go. Uh, okay. I got it set to the wrong channel. It's triggering on the first channel. And there we go. Now we're stable. Alright, so here's the cool thing. Here's what I'm going to show you. I have figured out a way with a little research and a lot of testing to adjust the pulse width of a signal with a single 555 timer. Okay, that's a simple operation. So I can adjust the pulse width. Actually, we can do a measure. Uh, let's do a uh, duty cycle. Whoops. Ah, uh, how do I save it? Ba ba ba. That's not it. All right. I really don't know how to make that go away. There we go. Okay, so here I've got the duty cycle. I'm going to set it. Let's smack the camera. I'm going to show you, then I'll zoom in on the screen. Let's just set it for 70. There, it's at 73.3, the duty cycle. Now, what I've done is taken a resistor and turned it into a variable capacitor. Okay? So basically, I've got a resistor here, like this. And then I've got the arm that goes into the potentiometer here that would normally go to like ground or another somewhere else. Well, I've got a capacitor across that center. So the further I come closer to the circuit or the further I come closer to ground varies the amount of capacitance that I'm applying to the circuit. So the, the bad thing is is that I can't adjust. Well, let me show you and then I'll tell you the bad. All right, so... Uh... Let's go ahead and turn on the frequency as well, because that's important value. All right, so right now we're at 42.2 hertz. I don't know which capacitor I got it on. We'll just see. But check this out. The pulse width is 73%. It's at 42.27 uh, hertz. All right, that's a low. Now check this out. I'm going to have to keep zooming in so you can actually see it. 
I'm gonna zoom all the way in. All right, check this out. It's all the way up at 11.17 kilohertz and still at 73% duty cycle. That's awesome. So I can adjust. I finally found a way to adjust to make a single 555 timer adjust the frequency but keep the duty cycle which is pretty cool there's not most of the time like the Dave Lawton circuit doesn't do that you can't do that now the bad thing about this circuit and it's only a small bad thing is that you have to set let's sit down you have to set the uh, duty cycle first and then adjust your frequency is the only bad thing. It's not a bad thing, but it, it I could not figure out a way to do it. So there's that. Let me zoom in so you can actually see this thing, because you can see my potentiometers. You don't need to see the rest of it. So check this out. I'm gonna adjust. I'm gonna adjust the duty. Let's just put it. Oh, and by the way, I got this thing to adjust the duty really, really, really far. So there's 0.23% all the way to 99.6%. That's a that's a good range. That's a real good range. Oh, uh, let's put it low. 14, just above 14. Let's just frequency. It's frequent. Let's go with the high value. Check this out. I can go all the way up to 100,000 hertz. All right, by flipping my uh, other capacitor value. It's just a little bit harder to adjust. So earlier we got to 10 kilohertz. All right, I check this out. I'm all the way up to 94 kilohertz. All right, you can see my signal got a little whack because I'm such a high frequency. And my duty cycle is still right at that value. It's, it barely moved. So we'll go, it's at 11.24 duty cycle. Let's go, let's go all the way back up. There's that 12. Okay. And granted, it works better, not, not the giant values. So there, we'll set it at uh, just above 30. We'll bring this thing all the way down. Whoops, wrong way. There, it went to 25, so it moved 5%. But I'll never, I'll never have it set that high. I only need a range of like here, which is 10 kilohertz. So there's 11 kilohertz at 29.7 duty cycle, and we can bring it all the way up to. 42 hertz so 42 hertz up to 10 kilohertz or 11 kilohertz and the duty cycle saves almost exactly so it's at 30.25 and there it's at 29.3 so it moved 1% duty which is good that's awesome for a 555 timer I was totally stoked to get that thing to work like that I was trying to figure out a way to make this thing work and do it with just a single 555 timer and I just I wasn't able to figure it out but I was able to figure out that I can adjust just frequency with duty now back to how this circuit functions this timer over here controlling this pulse frequency is what is actually going to be firing my coils so I'll tune this to get the coils to work the best and then I'll leave it so I can uh, I can plug this back in and pull our our pulse signal back off there and you can see alright so that's how that works um, I, I was going to use pulse fire the pulse fire Arduino controller it works great but I, uh, I wanted to do this so you guys can can also make this circuit because that's what it's all about it's having fun and learning Simple 555 timer circuit, but now one thing I will share with you is that if you overdrive, for instance, I'm 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 setting my pulse width that 
this timer is firing right now. I'm adjusting it. But since this one's running at, at such a high frequency, if I go over the frequency of what the timer is set at, it just fires for the length of the timer. Which doesn't really matter because I'm overdriving it here. So basically it's a it's an auto <laughs> auto adjust, if you will. But I'll never have it going that fast unless I'm doing some interesting tests. Most of the time it'll it'll look like this. Firing at once, very, very, very short pulse every once in a while. And that's it. So um let me try something. I'm gonna zoom in. We'll see if we can capture this this high frequency pulse. Boop! There it is. So this is uh, that was one pulse, single shot. It's it's still running, but that's the only timer. So, and actually we're we're too close. Let's let it run again. We'll capture. Ah, it's still too close. That's why I like this scope. It'll do single fire. Huh? Oh, I did. I don't have it on. There we go. So that pulse width that I just fired that is. Oh, I'm measuring uh, hertz. I want to measure seconds. 3.8 milliseconds. Within that 3.8 milliseconds, I have this rapid pulse. If I zoom in, well, then you can zoom in because it's a time shot. But basically, within this single 3.8 millisecond pulse from these timers, from this timer, let's say every minute, it fires this for this duration, 3.8 milliseconds, or whatever it has it set for, and then within that, it fires the coils at whatever frequency and pulse width I have it set at. So, it's a pretty cool little timer circuit. Um, you can use this for all sorts of stuff. And again, it's adjustable, so you can you can adjust whatever you want. So again, I'll, I'll, I'll get all this stuff out to you guys, and uh, when that day comes, I'm, I'll make another video. But that's it, Russ with OWGResearch.com. I am out. I have got to go take care of some stuff. I've been up for too many, too many, way too many, too many hours. Um, I like being up for many, many hours and getting stuff done and sharing what, what, what I have. So that's it. Long videos. You gotta love them, right? Details, details, details. Um, without details, it's not worth me making a video. So peace and love you guys. Always leave me comments. I'm slowly but surely catching up. And uh, for anybody who has no idea what in the world I'm working on right now, this is for the Popper Noble Gas Engine Device. Um, you can check it out on my website, rwgresearch.com. And that's it. See you guys later. Have a good day. Bye. Just when you think it's over, and it's not over, I forgot to tell you a few things. Um, the measuring devices that I'm trying to get kind of slow process so I'm doing what I can the other thing I want to tell you is um, my buddy Bill Williams the guy who designed and built the 5x5 split gas cell that you see over here also has built a lot of other really I need to bring that thing in really cool devices and one of them is a uh, spec spectra I can't I can't say the word right I'm going to abbreviate it. Spectra. It's a spectra device. It, it uh, will actually show you the emission lines of a light source. And he originally built that split gas cell. It's a hydrogen cell that splits the gas between the hydrogen and oxygen separately and does it in pretty good quantities. And he was actually using the hydrogen as a source flame and then introducing his other gases and burning it and using the light in his spectra device. He built an entire thing and is able to actually see the emissions lines. I am going to build something very similar with his help. He sort of helped me greatly, gave me some good information. And uh, I'm going to build something similar and we'll be able to see what colors, what emissions is coming out of the green glow and anything else that we'll be doing in the future. Um, he's provided enough information he's going to help me when I need it 
Um, if I have any questions, he's uh, going to answer them. So that's another thing that I'm going to be doing and hopefully get some more information gathered with that. So now it's the end. Peace.